Something in the back of your voice just triggers it, John. I didn't even say anything this time. I didn't even start by, I was going to let you talk about it. Yeah, oh, I'm am I always... speaking first. <laughs> okay. Well, hello, John. Hi, Cole. Hello, <laughs> new viewers. Seven of you. <laughs> hey. We might have gotten seven. more by the time this comes out. So who would be the seven? Ariel, Barb, Barbara, Roxanne, Jim. Um, there's a few others in there. Barry. No, there's a few others that we do pick on. No. So in all seriousness, we appreciate all those. And there's been a lot more comments, good lively discussion. I'm especially fond of the people who disagree with you. Those are my favorites to read. And what, what, how have I become a punching bag on there? People taking swipes at me all the time. Yeah, be, because you have weird opinions and weird <laughs> ideas. <laughs> really weird. So we were at the Pharaohs not long ago. Oh, my gosh. How long yeah. ago? Three weeks now? Two weeks? Well, more than that now. Because uh, when people are watching, well, from when we're recording, we were there, what, mid, end of July, right? End of July. Holy cow, okay. almost two months. That's, no, and I stayed, in, I, didn't I stay till the... I stayed till the 11th or 11th, something. 11th, yeah. So did you get any good shots from the Pharaohs, Jen? No. no yeah, I did, yeah. Actually, you did, I really, okay. I, I did okay, I think, yeah. I did, yeah. we showed in a recent, you know, for those who are new, you should go back and look at every one of our episodes because they're incredibly packed with with incredible content. So Yeah, and if you got insomnia, it's a perfect it's companion. Perfect to, to put you to a glass of warm milk and a... Yeah. yeah, no, but we we did a recent episode about the Pharaohs and and we got some good feedback on that. People really like seeing your images, and I especially like the comment where somebody said they actually liked mine better. Do you remember that? No, who? Yes, who? Yeah. Yeah, right. Who and you wrote that? back and said, "How do we ban that person from?" Oh, I remember. Yes, you did do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh, I think so what people are enjoying is. Um, is you know seeing some images from time to time so you know yeah yeah this is a photography thing maybe we ought to show an image why don't you show us some of yours from the faroe islands well you know what i thought i'd show today is this idea of process kind of moving on a little bit from our last discussion about how do you make meaningful images well you know to me there's a process that we go through and i you know i watch you and you don't you know for instance, when you show up at that, let's say in the dunes, because I know that picture behind you is when, when we're in the dunes. And, you know, what I find interesting is what was your intent going out there? Our intent, because I know where that was taken, was to go out onto the dunes and make photographs on the dunes. So let me just start this discussion off before I show some images is what is your process? We talked about a little bit, but I'm really wanting it to be a little different in this discussion, kind of a little push it to the next degree, if you will. So what happened that caused that image behind you today? What's the process, if you will, that happened? Well, so many images really are just luck yeah. because you are being observant. You're not so focused on what you thought you were coming for that you're able to look around. Yeah. And I don't recall how this was brought to our attention, but again, shooting right into the sun, we saw this car leaving from one of the canyons creating this incredible dust storm backlit dust storm yeah. and it was just an opportunity yeah. and i really find that so many images are just luck you're paying attention you're open and you see something and you go wow that looks cool and you pursue it yeah so and being in the right place at the right time luck serendipity all those things i get it but i but i think the the important message here is your process is to be very observant, to be very aware and not hyper focused on I'm going to the dunes. And so don't, hey, heavens forbid, we got backlit, you know, dust. Nope, not going to do that. I'm going to the dunes because that was my objective. So that's a good part of the process. Well, you know, Brooks uh, did a little. Oh, no, Brooks, Brooks, yeah, Brooks, 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 Brooks. He's my my hero. <laughs> Uh, he did this little blurb on me about my appearing in lens work several times. And yeah. he said something that I had never thought about. He said something about me. He says that I'm inquisitive. Yeah. And I've thought a lot about that word. And I, I am. I've always, even as a child, was always inquisitive about 
how things worked. And even today, it could be the guy out pumping my septic tank and I'm out there asking questions about how does he do it and how does he come home not smelling like that and what does his Cute. wife think? Yeah, I'm inquisitive. And I think that's a great quality in a expressive photographer. You want to explore, you want to understand, you want to learn. So I think that's a good word to focus I on. I like that. I like that. You are actually, that's very, very accurate for you. You're, you're in quit. Like when you meet new people, you want to know all about them. It's never a discussion about you. It's always a discussion about them and a very genuine discussion. You know, where are you from? Where, you know, what, where did you fall in love with photography? You'll ask a new participant on a tour that we're doing that you've never met. It's really quite interesting. And so let's, let's jump off of that for a second. I'm going to share my screen. I know that's going to scare you to death. So why would I share my screen? Whoa. Got to get some things out of the way here. Let me, wow, let me there's go. a mass. Oh, I, I made a quick um, uh, collection in Lightroom just to show you. You and I had the opportunity to go to this location twice. And so I just wanted to continue this discussion of process and just show you that if you look through the images you've got, so let me just do this, you know, a reasonably wide, and I'll talk about the differences of these two in a second. That's in the second part of what I want to show. But my inquisitiveness, and I'm going to steal that from you now, maybe I didn't even realize that's what I'm doing is, you know, I start there, but then I'm wondering, hey, wait a minute, I'm being drawn to all that action at the top, what's going on there. So I start playing and experimenting there. But then I asked myself, but is that the story? Is that really what I want to be focusing on? And these are raw images, folks. They haven't been edited. And that's part of the discussion I want to have. Did you have something you want to say, Cole? I didn't realize that these were unedited. So yeah. keep going. Not all of them are unedited. You know, that that's, uh, that's, has some editing. We'll talk about that in a minute. The first part of the, that I really want to talk about is that that I'm asking myself, what what is it that I'm trying to capture here? Do I want to go wider? Do I want to go tighter, right? Uh, and then, or as I look at the sky, I realize, I wonder, hey, I, I've got some lines there that might lead me right down to all the action that's happening there. So I'm not worried about one right answer, getting one great image. I'm I'm paying attention to what's going on in the whole thing and then asking myself, what is it that I'm really being drawn to? You know, do I want to check out a vertical? It didn't work for me, but I'm still going to look at it. And then do I want just the one piece there in the water? Do I want both? And so I'm, I'm making those images and then I'm not going to work. My process is to not worry about whether it's good or bad in camera or whether the composition is dead enough. I'm working hard to make the composition right, but I'm not going to be uber critical in the field. I'm going to do that later. I, I trust my process enough now at this point that, that I know I'm going to have something that's going to work compositionally. I trust my compositional skills, but I'm not going to miss the opportunity to try different things. And, and man, we had, as we were going oh. through these, that kept changing on every single yeah. one. So I probably made, I don't know, 30. Plus you could do a still versus a long exposure, which would change it again. Yeah. And so we're doing all these variations, you know, but, and then I finally come back and notice how different the, the, you know, the flow is depending on how long the exposure is. And so I'm working the scene and working the scene and working the scene. And, and to me, that's, that's a critical part of my process is to work the scene and ask those questions. Primarily, the, the main question is, what is it about the scene that's taking me? What am I being taken by? And then how do I then interpret that in a way or from a compositional standpoint in the field to capture that? And then I'll worry about the processing. And so let's, let's hop on over, over to here for a second. Well, maybe actually, let's go back to Lightroom. So as you look at these, so here's here's the original raw file. Uh, and let me go here and hit the D. But you can see it starts out as a color photograph. And then I do my processing in Lightroom 
and then I bring it into Photoshop to finish it. So if I go here and let's go to that particular image, which should be here, you can, ah, shoot, I guess I brought up the wrong one. I apologize. I, I thought this one had the, the, uh, the layer like, let's go to this one. No, I didn't do it on that one either, like a dummy. So let's do this one. You can see that here's the before, before I did any finishing touches in Photoshop. And here I'm doing finishing touches in Photoshop. And and for me, that part of the process is just taking a look at it and, and using dodging and burning techniques to emphasize certain tonal ranges within the images or make something darker, make something lighter. But that, that's essentially my process. And, and I just wanted to quickly... That's a lot of great variations from one single spot. Now, I have to admit that I would say 95% of the time when I'm shooting a scene, I just go straight to the scene and that's usually the scene and I don't do any variations. Huh. That site was so full of possibilities that it was. I think you illustrated a, a great number of the right answers because I mean, there, it's almost too much going on there. It's just so- It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just it was, the scene it was, itself. But then the cloud factor we had that morning. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. You know, so anyways, I, I thought it might be useful and instructive to talk a little bit. Of, you know, that's not my whole process, but that's a, the general idea of when I show up, I, I ask myself, what am I being taken by? And it was the flow for sure. That fog's not always happening going over those features there. So yeah. how do I how do I make that the central part of what the, the story is? I wonder if anybody remembers what we call that location. If you do, write it in the chat because we'd love to see how how much you were paying attention at that episode. Yeah, so it was that, a slightly that, that, irreverent name, but we have a yeah. name for that location that everybody knows now as that location. They should know what that location is. That's correct. Yeah. And if you put it in the comments, it'll let us know that you not only watched the first episode, but the next episode. And those seven new subscribers that that's a big test for you folks so you folks definitely need to you know go back and do your homework and look at those past episodes and whoever gets it right john will be out to wash your car wash your car or mow your lawn too i'll mow your lawn you know what as long as you have one of those old real push mowers remember those that made that it's a distinctive great sound, sound. No motor, it just my grandmother. I mean, because the had pharaohs a had that. lawn that was 10 feet by 12 feet. You didn't need a lawnmower. She just had one of those little push thingies. I saw those in the pharaohs and those those yes. microscopic lawns. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then we should plug the pharaohs too. Boy, oh boy, if you want a great location and you're tired of the crowds of Iceland, go visit uh, go. the Faroe Islands. I wish you could come with us, but we're full for next year already. But go on the wait list. Who knows? You might be able to join yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Somebody will, maybe you'll get lucky and somebody will get critically ill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's not nice. No. You're just, you're just not nice. Okay. See you in the next episode.